Hi, I'm Andy Singleton. I'm the director of the Center for Alzheimer's and Related Dementias, or, or CARD as we call it. And we have a very simple mission, and that is to create um, treatments and therapeutics uh, to prevent and treat Alzheimer's disease and related dementias. And we have a, a, an incredible focus on that mission. Everything we do is centered around meeting, um, meeting that mission. In structure, CARD is a, an incredibly collaborative endeavor. The idea is that every project and every program we have ongoing within the center is interrelated so that the whole is much greater than the sum of its individual parts. In order to get those individual parts to function and work together um, efficiently and to really maximize the work that we do here, we have several groups, expert groups that we call them, that provide expertise and, and muscle um, to individual projects and you'll meet many of those expert groups. We also have lots of other initiatives within CARD uh, centered around bringing large-scale data sets into the uh, center, making those easier to work with, around promoting diversity, equity, and inclusion within um, our, our work to really advance science and ensure that we're moving forward um, in a, an efficient and uh, global way. Uh, these diseases are global diseases, so we need to understand the diseases in global populations. It's an incredibly exciting time for us here at the center. Um, we've only been around for two years, but we have now around 100 or so people working here on various aspects, primarily in the basic and early translational space. Over the next few years, we'll be growing our clinical and late translational program. So we have some exciting developments there with space assigned and recruits for a director for a clinical translation. So incredibly exciting work happening now. Uh, great people who you're going to meet um, and uh, a really exciting future. So thank you. Hi, I'm Sara Vandres. I'm a staff scientist and the head of training and outreach at CART. I lead the genetics group and uh, really genetics is the starting point or the foundation to understand the etiology of Alzheimer's disease and related dementias. Our role is to dissect the genetic architecture of these conditions spanning the etiological risk spectrum. So from rare uh, deleterious variants usually involved in monogenic forms of disease to more uh, common variation increasing disease susceptibility usually for late onset sporadic forms. Uh, genetics is also key because it can offer insights into prediction, progression, and prognosis, and it can also guide us uh, for the development of tailored and um, personalized uh, therapeutics. Hi, my name is Nikki Washeka. I'm a technical lab manager here at CARD. We moved into this building, T44, at NIH campus in 2022. And it was very exciting building up to the move-in because we did a fair amount of planning and thoughtful work. The best way to make the building layout a way to facilitate collaboration between the different functional groups with the data scientists and the tissue culture people and the geneticists. So when we created this space, we knew we were going to need a lot of office space because that's where science is moving in the future with a lot of data and uh, compute power in the cloud. So that creates a lot of people with office space seats. But we also needed to make sure that we had enough lab space for all the fancy equipment that we have here. So the building is designed in a way so the data science folks can visualize and see the people in the lab. So we have this great atrium window area that hopefully gets folks to collaborate and come together and make relationships. Hi, my name is Erika Lara. I'm a scientist at CARD and I'm leading the Automated Cell Culture Expert Group. 
So we, our job is to produce uh, brain cells to study neurodegenerative disease. And one of the tools that we use is iPSCs. iPSCs can be differentiated into different types of cells, like neurons, microglia, astrocytes, organoids, and many other types of cells. We work in a small and in a large uh, scale. We are working with a project, the iPSCs, Neurodegenerative Disease Project, or INDI project, as is known. And uh, this is the largest ever um, genome engineering project to introduce uh, more than 100 genetic variants associated with ADRD into isogenic iPSCs lines, uh, resulting in more than 600 lines. So as you can imagine, having this large scale of mutant lines, uh, we need a good optimization, reliability, and reproducibility. So that's why we have these automated systems that allow us to simultaneously culture multiple lines at a time that we can differentiate into neurons for downstream assays. So we collaborate here at CAR with other teams like proteomics, transcriptomics, and microscopy to all together uh, create an open data repository to then uh, try to find possible pathways uh, to, that are related to Alzheimer's disease and related dementias, and possibly to find new therapeutic uh, strategies. Each one has two incubators that you can see in the back. We have a microscope, we have in the bottom a centrifuge, we have a decapper that is here that allows to uh, decap the cryotubes that we input at the time that introducing iPSCs and the deck itself that where the most of the work is done. So we, we really are uh, working pretty hard as a team to collaborate with the other teams and I always like to say that we are the backbone of uh, uh, most of the projects or many of the projects here at CAR that require cell models. Hi, I'm Elise Morrison and I'm the Chief of the Molecular Pathology Unit here at CORD. Our unit is very interested in understanding the common pathological mechanism between different types of dementia. And to do so, we have two strategies. One, it will look directly at the patient affected by Alzheimer's disease or frontotemporal dementia using postmodern brain tissue. We actually studied those postmodern brain tissue using brain new technology that allow you to look at different RNAs and protein on a piece of postmodern brain tissue. This is called spatial transcriptomic. In addition to that, in the lab, we are able to do different bench experiments, but also to model the pathology in a dish. So to do so, we grow iPS-derived organoids that help us to understand how the disease progression of the pathology, as well as the cross-communication between different cell types, such as neuron that might be vulnerable to the pathology, but also non-neuronal cells that can be toxic to the neuron, such as macroglia, astrocyte, and blood vessels. Um, hi, my name is Veronica Ryan. I'm the Alzheimer's and Related Dementias Independent Scholar. Uh, leading the transport and translation unit here at CARD. Uh, and so we're interested in understanding um, the role of RNA transport and local translation in neurons in nerve degeneration. We focus on um, frontal temporal dementia and ALS uh, because a bunch of the proteins that are associated with that disease are RNA binding proteins. And so these proteins are involved in um, transporting RNAs to sites of local translation as well as regulating that translation itself. Um, and so kind of trying to understand how that, like how mutations in those genes are um, affecting the function of those proteins and leading to neurodegeneration. My name is Andy Key. I'm currently running the proteomics expert group at the Center for Alzheimer's and Related Dementia. Our group is using uh, a technology called proteomics, which we sequence a biological molecule called protein at a very large scale. And our goal is to uh, identify the, uh, the pathogenesis of Alzheimer's disease and uh, discover the biomarker for prevent and treat the disease uh, eventually. We analyze the uh, protein fragments at very large scale. We identify about, about 8,000 to 10,000 protein at 
uh, around 19 minutes uh, data acquisition. And for, for this, we have built a fully automated uh, pipeline. Yeah, our group actually started uh, a many collaboration intramural and extramural uh, that allow us to actually uh, work with other uh, group as a team uh, to, uh, to fully understanding the, uh, the molecular basis of Alzheimer's disease and ultimately to uh, identify the biomarker and the biomarker panel uh, to identify the population who are at the risk for this type of disease. And hopefully we can find some uh, biomarker for a newer therapeutic strategy to treat and prevent Alzheimer's disease. Hi, I'm Swam Kim Billingsley. I'm leading the long read sequencing group at the Center for Alzheimer's Disease and Related Dementias. And so my work focuses on nanopore long read sequencing, which is a new technology which can capture a lot more of the genetic variation in the genome. And so we're applying this new technology to hundreds of human brain samples so that we can start to find new mutations that are associated with Alzheimer's disease and related dementias. The ultimate goal of our projects is that we'll identify new genetic mutations um, in specific genes. And then this information will help other groups that can then take this information and look at RNA and protein to identify the functional impact of these new mutations. Hi, I'm Zylena Reed. I am the leader of the single cell technology expert group here at CARD, uh, where we work from everything that is based single cell technology. So it used to just be single cell sequencing, which was looking at gene expression in cells that have been separated from um, either brain samples or iPSC-derived cell types. Um, but now it's evolved into these spatial technologies where we can look and see exactly where transcripts are within the cells. Basically looking at what genes are expressed where and in what cell types and how they are being regulated within the cell. So traditional RNA sequencing methods are done um, in what we call bulk now. So like if you take a piece of the brain, uh, it has a lot of different cell types that are mixed up into it. So you get an average of expression across those cell types. Uh, so single cell sequencing allows you to then separate those cell types into just one cell at a time. And then by the expression pattern, we can group them together then within microglia or neurons or astrocytes. So we can see what the expression patterns are actually like within those cell types. Um, and that allows you to really understand what is what is happening in within each cell type rather than the average across the whole tissue or the whole plate of cells that you have. So one of our big projects is the brain cell atlas where we're trying to collect as many samples as we can um, to identify quantitative expression or quantitative trait loci within the brain that are specific to certain cell types. So what is expressed or um, relevant within a neuron may not be the same thing that's relevant within a microglia cell um, and what makes those cell types different. Um, so we also help out a lot of the other expert groups by doing some smaller experiments with them to identify expression patterns within the cell types that they make and see what is involved in Alzheimer's and related dementias. So my name is Mike Knowles. I'm lucky enough to lead the advanced analytics expert group. It's a uh, it's really been a highly collaborative endeavor for CARD, where we work to connect and facilitate the research of all of the teams within CARD, but also um, really trying to accelerate and fill gaps with external collaborators. A lot of our goals are um, building cloud forward and high performance computing software so that we can run all the analyses that are needed by the teams here, but also to facilitate external collaboration, because part of our job is to fill gaps in the portfolios, not only of CARD, but in CARD's collaborators. We do this by building scalable solutions that empower research. And one of the nice things is we think about this in a project focus manner in which this is almost like a product that we're rolling out and the paper is the advertising for the good work that we've been doing here at CARD. So it's focusing on filling these gaps and empowering others. As part of our mission at CART, uh, we aim to train the next generation of scientists in the Alzheimer's disease and related dementia space. And it's not only key to make our research globally relevant, but to ensure that we are building a unique, diverse, and inclusive community.